Hello students, this is going to be a quick office hours video where we're going to go through, we're going to solve a labor market, a classical labor market, where you're given a labor demand function and a labor supply function. Out of that, you'll get a wage that clears the labor market and an optimal level of labor. That we will then plug into a production function to find a, our full employment level of output. Let's start with just explaining a little bit about these functions, what's given in this problem. The first thing up here, that's our production function. We're seeing that it is going to start by increasing at a decreasing rate. It will hit an inflection point where it'll start decreasing, but we're just going to look at the point where we're seeing it's increasing at a decreasing rate. Please note that this is not a Cobb-Douglas production function that we've seen in the past, but you can still do a lot of things with it, including taking the first derivative and finding my marginal product of labor. We're going to have a few things that are given and that are fixed throughout the problem, including our TFP, our total factor productivity, which we represent as the letter A, which is just our technology parameter. How, if I were to hold capital and labor fixed, what else is there that can change my overall output? We're going to have capital, our capital stock is fixed at 14, and we're also given a supply of labor function. Please note that this supply of labor function is only showing a positive relationship between the real wage and the supply of labor. What that means is we have an upward sloping labor supply function, and so the substitution effect will always be outweighing the income effect with the level of uh, workers that we're going to be looking at for this problem. Okay. The way we get started with this type of problem is we first want to start with the labor market. We know that we're going to have a labor demand and a labor supply, and in this very simple classical model, we're going to assume that the wages are set in, labor, in a labor demand, labor supply, a supply equals demand type market, meaning that we're going to assume that wages are completely flexible and we're going to get to a wage that will clear the market, making the quantity of labor demanded equal to the quantity labor supplied, we're not going to see a shortage, nor will we see a surplus of labor. What we have here is we have supply of labor. The next thing is like, well, where's my demand for labor? And that's where my marginal product of labor comes in. We know that firms are going to maximize profit by hiring up to the point where the real wage equals the marginal product of labor. If you need a review on that, please reach out. I'm more than happy to go over it. But I know firms are going to maximize profit when we see the real wage equal to my MPL. This is what we call the profit maximizing condition. So there's a specific point when wage equals the marginal product of labor. The labor that we choose that makes that true, that condition true, will maximize the profits for the firm. Now that we know that, we can really start to get into the meat of this problem. We want to go ahead and combine our supply of labor and our demand of labor to get us to one uh, specific amount of labor and then the wage that will make that labor happen. I have my labor supply function, meaning that the total labor is going to equal the 2 plus W. And I know my W has to also be my MPL, which allows us to do the following. Supply of labor is now just going to be my number of labor. So I have L equals to 2 plus W. And we, said, we said that W is going to equal my MPL function, which is right up here. So 2 plus A times K which was given, 3 times 14 is 42, minus 2 times L, and L is our unknown. That's what we're trying to solve for. And we can do this algebra out and say that means L equals 2 plus 42 minus 2L, which means we have 3L equal to 44. And I can go ahead and do this in a calculator, which I've already done for you, but if you need to pause and go ahead and do it, that's perfectly fine. We're going to get L equal to 14.67. May as well just round it to two decimal places. A lot of people say, what is, how can it be 0.67 of workers? Well, we could say L is measured in millions. We can say L is measured in just hours because people don't have to work a full hour or a full day. So we could do something like that. What we've got here now is my optimal level of labor that's going to uh, come out of our labor market. 
So I was running out of room, had to erase the work we just did. Well, we just found that my L star is equal to 14.67. So now we can plug that in either to labor demand, which is my MPL function, or back into the supply of labor to get the real wage that would settle this. I personally like to do both of them if I was on an exam or a problem set, just to make sure that I didn't make a simple math error. We can go ahead and start with the MPL, which we know is equal to wage. Remember this, equal to wage, because that's where the firms are going to choose to maximize their overall profits. So let's go ahead and just say that wage is going to equal A times K, which we know is 42, minus 2 times L, which I know is 14.67. I go ahead and I plug all that into my calculator, and I will get wage equal to 12.67. But let's double check. We want to go to the supply side. The supply side, SL, which is my supply of labor, is 14.67 equal to 2 plus W. Well, I'm just going to subtract 2 from this, and what do we get? Wage equal to 12.67. So now I have found a level of real wage that will clear this labor market. So my labor demand and my labor supply are both equal to 14.67. The last unknown that we're trying to find here is the overall output, which is going to be our uh, output that happens when we're at the full employment level of employment, our L star. And all we have to do is plug in the stuff that we know into my production function. So what is my production function when I plug in everything? I know my Y star is then going to be A times K, which we know is 42, multiplied by L, 14.67, and then we're going to subtract 14.67 squared. I'll do exactly what I do in class with my students, as I say we do some calculations here, and we get out by plugging this into a calculator, we get 400.93. Please make sure you pause the video and you try this out to make sure that you're doing everything correctly because sometimes the way you plug this into your calculator uh, will give you a, uh, a wrong answer because of the order of operations. Make sure you're doing the square first and then you're going through and you're doing everything out. So we've done all the algebra that we need to do to solve for this model. Now what we need to do is we want to model it on a stacked diagram. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the production function on top and the labor market on bottom. So our production function we know is a function that relates the output y to the overall labor. And down here, since we're stacking it vertically, we want our horizontal axis to have the exact same value, which is labor. But this is my labor market, so we're looking at the real wage versus the overall amount of labor. We want to do this theoretically, and as we talked about before, this isn't a Cobb-Douglas that will infinitely have this you know, concave function. But for the first part that we're going to look at, it actually does look like this. And you can check it out by plugging it into Excel if you need to. So what we're going to first see is we're just going to see our production function looking like this. I like to say this is my production function with A and K kept constant. You can put it whichever way you want. This is the way I usually like to show my students, just that way they see what we're keeping constant here in the production function. Down here, we have our basic labor demand function. So this is going to be my demand for labor, which is also my MPL. So we make sure we want to label it that way. And I have an upward sloping labor supply, which is my supply of labor. Now some students ask me, do I have to uh, plot the intercepts? Uh, you can. What I require in my class is just kind of a theoretical understanding of what's going on. What we did before with our numbers that are up here is we just find the equilibrium. Right here, this is that single wage that clears the market. As you can see, that was 12.67. It caused the labor supply and the labor demand to both be equal to 14.67. And now what I can do is I can plug that L star into my production function, which is what we did, to find Y star. What exactly are we doing? 
we're going up to the production function, 14.67. I'm plugging that in as my input to this production function and getting my output of Y star, which is 400.93. So there you have it. A very straightforward example of how you use the labor market to find a wage that clears the labor market. We get a single level of labor, plug that back into my production function to find my full employment level of output. Next step would be to have some sort of change, maybe a shift in demand, a shift in supply, a shift in the production function, and then recalculating things and talking about policies that could make those shifts happen. So make sure you're studying for your exam, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments or shoot me an email.